In the comments of some of my previous videos, quite a few of you have been asking about the differences between some of the recorders I've been reviewing on this channel. Therefore, I'm starting a series where I'll be comparing them to each other, so if you're interested, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. In this video, we're going to explore the differences between the Zoom H5 and Zoom H6, and we're going to figure out which one is best for you. Before we begin, I'm going to point out that the Zoom H5 and Zoom H6 are very similar recorders, but they are built for different purposes. As we go through the video, I'm going to lay down the actual differences and explain what situations each option would be better suited for. The Zoom H5 only has two XLR inputs, as opposed to the four built-in XLR inputs on the Zoom H6. If you plan on doing journalism or recording one-on-one -on -one interviews, which would only require a maximum of two external microphones, the two XLR inputs on the Zoom H5 will suffice. On the other hand, the four built-in XLR inputs on the Zoom H6 gives you the ability to plug in four microphones, thus making it perfect for podcasts, recording demos, band recordings, and more. It is important to note that both recorders are modular, and they can use the Zoom Dual XLR slash TRS input capsule. This allows them to use two more XLR microphones, though neither recorder can provide phantom power to the extra module. Even though both recorders have exceptional battery life, the Zoom H5's is shorter than that of the Zoom H6, according to Zoom. This was presumably measured without any external microphones connected to the device. Bear in mind that connecting two microphones to the H5 or four to the H6 will lower the battery life, especially if you're using phantom power. There are many variables which will potentially affect the battery life of the device, but the takeaway is that they both can record for hours at a time, and it's always worth carrying some extra batteries with you, just in case. The Zoom H5 is a bit smaller and lighter than the Zoom H6. This is important to consider if you plan on adding it on top of a DSLR, which might already have a battery pack strapped to it. The actual dimensions for the Zoom H5 are 7.7 by 2.63 by 1.66 inches, and it weighs 9.52 ounces or 269 grams. The Zoom H6 comes in at 14.46 ounces or 410 grams and measures 8.39 by 3.1 by 1.88 inches. Even though both are sturdy and rugged, it is worth to point out that the Zoom H6 is rather larger and heavier, and this should be taken into consideration. When it comes to displays, the H5 has a backlit LCD, whilst the H6 has a much nicer 2-inch full-color LCD. Also, whilst the Zoom H6 screen is angled slightly down, the H5 is not. This is neither a good thing nor is it a bad thing, as it just depends on what you're using the device for. If you'll be looking down at the recorder, the Zoom H5 screen is better for that. If, on the other hand, the recorder will be closer to your eye level, like if it were mounted on a DSLR camera, the H6 screen will allow you to monitor levels without having to move your camera too much in order to look at the screen. Whilst both recorders offer phantom power, which is needed by condenser microphones, the Zoom H6 offers phantom power for all its four XLR inputs. The two extra XLR inputs, which can be mounted on top with a modular component, cannot receive phantom power on either the H5 or the H6. If you plan on connecting dynamic microphones to the Zoom Dual XLR slash TRS input capsule, this should be fine, as dynamics do not require phantom power. On the other hand, if you are going to connect condensers, they will not receive an adequate amount of power. Regardless, make sure to look up whether or not your microphones require phantom power in the first place before purchasing the capsule. In regards to sound quality, they're about the same. No major differences between the two, 
although they both sound much better than the older Zoom H4n, especially in regards to self-noise. That being said, the upgraded Zoom H4n Pro offers similar sound quality to the aforementioned H6 and H5. When it comes to preamps, neither of them are as good as the Sony PCMD100, although the Sony device does not have XLR inputs. If you're wondering why preamps are relevant, here is a quick explanation. Simply put, when recording quieter sounds, there is a certain amount of hiss produced as a byproduct when you pump up the gain. Better quality preamps tend to result in less hiss in those instances. If you're recording outdoors, which might be the case if you're a journalist, field recordist, sound effects recordist, if you're recording a live band or more, foam windshields will prove to be rather unhelpful. It's great when recording indoors, but any real gust of wind will make the recording unusable. Luckily, Rycoat sells a 3-in-1 solution for each recorder. A grip by which you can hold the recorder, a shock mount which basically eliminates handling noise, and a good quality windshield which will protect the microphone from wind, although very strong winds might still affect the microphone. If you're curious, I've included a link down below to all of the gear mentioned in the video so you can have a look. The Zoom H5 has a metal bar which makes it difficult to accidentally change the input levels. Whilst the H6 does have some measures in place in order to prevent that, the H5 method feels a lot more reliable as it is a large metal bar, physically preventing you from making any changes. If you know you're likely to accidentally hit or run your hand over the recorder and change the levels, this might be something to take into consideration. Which one should you get? Ultimately, both recorders are very similar, but built for different purposes. They're both quite rugged and well-built, have good sound quality, modular microphones and multiple XLR inputs. If all you need is to connect a maximum of two microphones to it, like in a one-on-one -on -one interview setting, the Zoom H5 will suffice. That being said, if you think you might one day need to plug in a few extra microphones, it's worth spending a little bit of extra money and getting the Zoom H6. The price difference isn't massive, and by getting the Zoom H6, you're future-proofing yourself. If you want a slightly more in-depth review with more info, you can find it over at skiesaudio.com. I've included a link down below. Also, if you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have links down below where you can view them. Finally, since a lot of you seem to like my voice, I've created a meditation channel where I post every week. If you want to check it out, I have a link down below for that as well. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.